Ranking member, uh, Ms. Scanlon, for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to our witnesses. You, we appreciate you being here to share your experiences and help everybody understand um, both the very personal stories that are implicated in this issue, as well as some of the political agendas that are being pushed. Um, it is remarkable that our majority colleagues were not able to find any medical professionals to back their claims in today's hearing, other than an edited video, video of someone who actually has refuted their conclusions. And much of what we've heard today really is playing to and from some of the furthest extremes of right-wing ideology and fear-mongering. Uh, Mr. Minter, our colleagues and witnesses have expressed concern about the participation of transgender students on athletic teams aligning with their gender identities, even while conceding several times now that to the extent this is a concern in competitive athletics, the athletic governing bodies are addressing this issue for competitive athletes. Can you further comment? Yeah, this uh, transgender Students, transgender girls and women have been playing uh, on sports teams for a long time now. Only recently has this become weaponized as a political issue. We, sports associations, athletic, high school athletic associations, governing sports bodies, local school districts have long been able to deal with this issue as they should by looking at relevant factors like age, sport, level of competition, individual circumstances, there is, this is a classic solution in search of a problem. The real problem, if there is one, is the one Ms. Reynolds, Ms. Reynolds identified, which is still so difficult for transgender kids to participate at all or to receive any encouragement and support. Right, and that, that has been one of the primary concerns that we've been hearing from families as um, they have kids who just want to be kids and participate in sports. And because of the weaponization of this issue, it's become a problem. So thank you for that. Um, we've also heard conservative lawmakers and activists argue that bans on gender-affirming care are necessary to protect minors, with many labeling gender-affirming treatments experimental, and as we've seen here today repeatedly, deliberately confusing gender-affirming care with gender transition surgery. Can you speak to that issue? Again, uh, surgery is an adult treatment. We're not, that is not what we're talking about with uh, children and youth. And there have been now uh, six court cases, including, including two complete full trials, where any, these states have had the opportunity to substantiate the claim that this treatment is experimental. They have no evidence of that. And again, courts across a wide, a wide variety of judges have concluded that there is some, this is not experimental care. It is well established. It's well founded. There's extensive clinical research showing the benefits. And this is just what ordinarily happens in our healthcare system, which is parents with their children and their healthcare providers making reasonable medical decisions to help their own children. Thank you. Um, if you had about 30 seconds to address any additional concerns, what would you say? Uh, the UK still provides uh, health care to transgender young people. They shut down the one clinic that used to provide all the, clear, all the care in order to open up multiple regional clinics to serve more children. The Swedish study has been uh, referred to here a number of times today. It's so important. That study lends zero credence to the notion that these treatments are not effective. And the author of that study has repeatedly expressed great distress at the way her study has been misrepresented. She strongly opposes bans on health care for transgender youth. Thank you. Um, we have heard a lot of misinformation, um, you know, probably firmly held personal beliefs, but that may be at odds with the facts. So I want to correct some of that for the record, Mr. Chairman. I would seek unanimous consent to enter the following items into the record. Um, a letter from leading medical organizations to Congress opposing efforts to ban gender-affirming care. Without objection. A letter from the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights in support of laws and policies that promote transgender, non-binary, and intersex people from discrimination. Without objection. An opinion by the U.S. District Court in Arkansas, which was later affirmed by the Eighth Circuit Court, which has a very complete assessment of the legal and factual basis for uh, this discussion, it found a statewide ban on gender-affirming care to be vi in violation of the 14th Amendment. Without objection. 
a human rights campaign FAQ on gender affirming care for anyone who has questions about what's actually going on. Without objection. A policy paper from Women's Sports Foundation entitled Participation of Transgender Athletes in Women's Sports. I'm almost done. Without objection. And a New York Times article entitled How a Campaign Against Transgender Rights Mobilized Conservatives. Without objection. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you. The gentlelady yields back. Chair recognizes the